Hi there and welcome to the first lecture of this chapter, chapter 3 of Nature in Code, which is about genetic drift. So in the previous lectures we established the Hardy-Weinberg principle. And just as a reminder, the Hardy-Weinberg principle assumes a world of infinite population size, random mating, no mutation or selection, and a number of other assumptions. Um, in this world, allele frequencies stay the same forever. And if the genotype frequencies are not currently at very specific Hardy-Weinberg frequencies, then they will get there in a single generation and then remain there forever. So, in short, nothing ever changes, um, in the long run at least, in the Hardy-Weinberg world. And so it's now time for us in this chapter to relax the first assumption. And the assumption we are going to relax in this chapter is that of an infinite population size. So we are now going to assume that populations are finite in size, and it turns out that this has enormous effects for evolution. And why is that? Well, when populations are finite in size, then chance effects will start to play a role. And one of the intuitions I want to develop in this lecture is that these chance effects are stronger when the populations are smaller. And this will be a key takeaway of this chapter, that genetic rift um, is stronger when the population is smaller. And I would like to develop this intuition with a coin tossing example. So suppose you have a perfect coin. A uh, perfect coin is one where uh, heads, heads comes up 50% of the time, exactly 50%, and tails comes up 50% of the other time. Now, suppose you would be tossing a coin like this 10 times, and you, you, know, you would just count how often you get heads, how often you get tails. So heads and tails. And so say you would be tossing um, head first, then tails, then tails again, then heads, tails again, heads, tails, tails, heads, and then maybe heads again. So in this case, you would have a 5 to 5 ratio. And this is what you would expect, right? You have a 50-50 chance, so a 5 to 5 outcome is, uh, is, is not unusual. Of course, many times you would get something like this, uh, where you would maybe have some a pattern like this, and you end up having a 4 to 6, or 6 to 4 ratio, and even sometimes 7 to 3, or 8 to 2. And in fact, even 9 to 1, or all heads or all tails, wouldn't be unheard of. Now, imagine now you would do this 100 times rather than 10 times. So uh, you would increase your coin tossing efforts by factor 10. Okay? And you would now throw it 100 times. It turns out that most of the time, the heads to tails ratio will be very close to 50-50. And anything like 40-60 is very rare. 70-30 is almost unheard of. 80-20 practically impossible. Now, uh, you don't have to believe me. Let's actually, let's actually um, toss some coins. So there's this really great website. Um, uh, if you uh, Google toss a coin, you'll come up to this website, random.org, which is a great resource for anything random. Um, and there's this page here called Coin Flipper. And it allows you to flip a virtual coin. So let's say we're gonna coin, uh, we're gonna toss ten coins, okay? And you can choose the type of the coin. Um, I'm gonna choose the Swiss franc, uh, just because I'm Swiss, uh, and it's also a beautiful coin, actually. Uh, and I'm gonna flip the coin here, okay? Flip ten coins. It doesn't really matter. You can choose any uh, any coin type as long as it's fifty fifty. All right, let's flip flip the coins. All right, so look at this. We have um, eight 
heads and two, I guess, numbers or tails, whatever you want to call it. They call it obverse and reverse. And that's fine too. It doesn't matter. There are two options and it comes up two to eight the first time. Uh, let's flip it again. Uh, we got a four to six. Flip it again. We got a three to seven. Flip it again. Another three to seven. A four to six. A four to six. A four to six. Again. And so on. Oh, here's a five to five. So I don't want to do this forever, but you get the idea. You get all kinds of different uh, ratios. And we just had an eight to two right in the beginning. And uh, if you would do this a couple of times, you'll get an eight to two again, and probably even a nine to one. Now, uh, let's go back here and uh, flip it a hundred times. Okay, so let me flip a hundred coins here, flip coins. Now, the only downside of this page is it doesn't tell you how often it, uh, it did a reverse and an obverse. So it doesn't tell you the heads to tails ratio. Uh, you could count it manually, of course, but that would be uh, a little annoying. There's actually a little trick. Um, if you look at the source code, which you can here either get through uh, view developer source code, view source, remember we did this before, or right click on the page and say view page source. And that works in Safari and in uh, Internet Explorer and in uh, Mozilla but I'm using Chrome here. So view page source. All these coins are actually listed down here. See, and whenever it's uh, a reverse, then it says here reverse. And whenever it's an obverse, it says obverse. So we can actually just search for this term here and then count how often that occurs. So you can do this, uh, at least on a Mac, uh, Command F will search it. Uh, and, and certainly you can do this as well on on uh, on a Windows machine. But if you actually search here for obverse dot jpg, so jpeg, that's the format of the uh, image, and you see one out of forty nine. So there are forty nine occurrences of this particular coin. So in forty nine cases. Um, this this phase came up and in 51 cases the other one came up so it's very very close to 50 50. let me let me uh let me just toss these coins again okay flip again all right once again you page source and search for obverse.jpg 52. okay so the ratio we have here is 52 to 48 and let's do this one more time uh, flip again, view page source, search for a verse of JPEG, 49. So you see, in all these three cases, we are very, very close to 50-50. We didn't have anything even remotely close to 70-30 or something like that. But um, in, in the 10 coin tosses, we had 73 quite often. And that's really the point. Um, if you, the, the more often you do this, the closer you get to the expected outcome of 50-50, okay? So a perfect 50-50 outcome is the expected outcome, but in a stochastic world, you get a distribution of outcomes. Uh, so some will be uh, five to five, a few will be four to six, less will be seven to three and so on. So if you were to uh, draw a little histogram here um, where you had all the outcomes, okay, so this would be your number of, say, uh, uh, tails, okay? And you would, of course, have everything from zero to 10. Okay. And most of the time, the um, outcome here is, uh, let me use another pen here, five tails. But sometimes you get six or four, and sometimes seven or three, sometimes eight or two, and sometimes uh, just one 
or nine tails and then uh, even more rarely and i guess i have to switch uh here again is either zero or ten tails and so this is what we call a binomial distribution and it's binomial because if we have two possible outcomes and we have n events here and we can now using this binomial distribution calculate how often a specific event for example here tails comes up uh, so we can calculate for example how often uh, would we get eight um, tails and two heads or how often will we get four tails six heads and things like that we can calculate this very precisely with this distribution uh, we're going to do that in the next lecture but that's not really uh, the main point of the lecture the main point will be to now implement this randomness in code uh, in javascript and so that we'll be able to work with it in future in future lectures but i hope this has developed some sort of basic intuition about randomness and that um, the effect of randomness can be much more pronounced in uh, small sample sizes and that will in biology will translate into small populations so this will be one of the takeaway messages of this entire chapter is that genetic drift which we're going to talk about in the next lectures is the strongest in the smallest of population all right i'll see you in the next lecture